Welcome to the new Fly Fisher. We're here on the fabulous Restigouche River on the border between Quebec and New Brunswick. We're catching Atlantic salmon. There's going to be lots of exciting runs and leaps. Stay tuned. Let him go back to live another day. And away he goes. Great fish. Wow. Oh, baby. Look at that fish. Stop, wiggle, on the way down. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to Islander Precision Reels and Orvis Sporting Traditions. On this week's show, the new fly fisher crew are the guests of the Restigouche River Lodge. This beautiful lodge is located on three miles of prime Atlantic salmon water. The lodge is at the junction of the Restigouche and Mattapedia rivers on the border of New Brunswick and Quebec. The lodge is a full service lodge with comfortable accommodations, friendly staff, great food, and of course, spectacular Atlantic salmon fishing. The lodge is one of the first camps on a salmon's journey up the Restigouche from the Atlantic Ocean, so fish here may be seeing a fly for the first time after they enter fresh water. The Restigouche River salmon are renowned for being strong and acrobatic and are some of the largest salmon in Canada. Between 15,000 and 25,000 salmon enter the Restigouche each year, which attracts anglers from all over the world. Our guide for today is Randy McNaughton. Randy takes great pride in his trade as a professional guide and boatman. No one is better handling a canoe than Randy. With many years of experience on the Restigouche, I'm confident that this will be an excellent trip. The craft we're fishing from is called a Restigouche River Canoe. They're made just down the road from the lodge. These are sleek giants of the canoe world, virtual works of art reaching lengths of 25 feet. They're very stable and they're wonderful fishing platforms. Anglers and their guides along the Restigouche have been using a version of this canoe for over 100 years. The vessel is very stable and comfortable and able to carry a large amount of supplies. It's perfect for our fishing today. See the salmon here? What's that? See the salmon right here? Two of them? Oh, yeah. Yeehaw. So that was interesting. We, uh, we tried one fly through there. Didn't work. Tried a light fly and then switched to a dark fly. And it did the trick. I was uh, proud of myself because I didn't do a trout strike. In Atlantic salmon fishing, you've got to let the fish have the fly and you've got to wait till they come up and take the fly and turn so it sets in the corner of their mouth. And it's so, uh, so much of a natural reaction for a trout angler to lift and set the hook and that just pulls the fly out of their mouth. So we got lucky there. I got lucky there. So when you're netting a salmon like this, you want to you want to lead the fish over the top of the net, let it go over the top of the net, and then the netter, your guide or your friend, will just lift the net right up under the fish. Perfect, Randy. And then we're going to keep this fish in the water, being very careful of these fragile, beautiful, precious fish. And you might lift them very briefly and then put them back. Then Randy's gonna, gonna bur you're gonna burp them, right? To get all the air. Burping gets all the air out of their... All the air out of their system. All out of their system, so they've got just water in there. He's gonna be fine. There she goes. There she goes. Thanks. My <laughs> first, uh, my first uh, Restigouche salmon, or my first Restigouche grills, to be precise. One of the big ones would be nicer. One of the big ones would be nicer. <laughs> of course. But they're all fun. 
So we're, we're really blessed with um, three miles of private bright fish water. And we have 10 pools and they fish well right through September. And because we're on the lower part of the river, all the rest of the goose fish have to pass through our water to hit the major tributaries upriver. And um, we're, we're also blessed with two major holding and spawning pools. So our, we're usually filled with hundreds of salmon um, through August and September getting ready to spawn in November. When you're fishing a big pool like this and you want to cover both sides of the boat, um, what I did was I started on this side, gradually lengthened line, made my drifts through there. What Randy told me, which I should have known better, was to cast short on this side, cast short on this side, cast a little longer here, cast a little longer here, so I don't have to reel in between the two sides, which makes total sense. Got yep, that was the one. This feels like a heavier fish, Randy. I do believe. What's happening here is we're gonna have to follow this fish with the boat. He's down into that faster water and we just can't pull him up through and we can't wade this very well. So we're gonna bring the boat down so we can get downstream of the fish so that he has to fight the current Oh, against us. Fish. Wow. Amazing. How big is that fish? 16, 17 pounds. Wow. Oh, magnificent. Can I release her? You bet. Oh, there there you go. she goes. Wow. Wow. Good job. My first adult salmon. It's always more fun to sight fish for salmon if you can see them. And you're not going to see the whole fish, so don't look around for a whole fish. They're very well camouflaged. What you want to look for is the white of that mouth opening up when they gape. They, move, they gape a lot when they move upstream, or the big flag of the tail moving back and forth. So those are the two things you want to key into when you look for salmon in a river. She is. Got him. Now what would happen if you got a huge fish and it went down into the... Oh, came off. I didn't bow to him. I didn't bow to the fish. Bowing to the fish is to, when it jumps, give it some slack. And I didn't bow. And when they jump on a tight line, you often lose the fish. We, we really try to keep a professional but a very casual and warm atmosphere in the camp. We want, we, want, we want a lot of interaction with our guests and the staff, as much as the guests want to interact with the staff, we, we really like that atmosphere. Our main meals have, uh, we're usually serving three, four pound lobsters, prime rib, um, scallops, turkey, chicken. We have some nice family dinners um, and we keep a very warm and pleasant and friendly atmosphere at the table. We really encourage a lot of interaction and that's really half the half the fun of, of being here at the camp, to, meeting all the new people that we get to meet, that we're privileged to meet. After a hearty and delicious lunch, Randy and I went out to look for some more salmon. I couldn't wait to see if some fresh fish came into the river. There are lots of theories on swing speed in Atlantic salmon fishing, and you go crazy listening to all of them, but one of the things you want to make sure is that the fly line is never downstream of the fly. If the fly line is downstream of the fly, it pulls the fly at the fish, and that's going to spook the fish, and they're not going to take it. Yep, there's another oh, one. come on, eat it. You got him. He came back, came to it twice. Feels like a heavy fish. We'll see. We're gonna slide over into the shallows again. We'll try to take the fish with us. So I'm just trying to keep up line as we as we drop down with this fish. 
This, when he hits this shallow bar, he's probably going to not like it and take off. I would expect. He's shaking his head pretty hard, which always scares you. Oh, there's a jump. Beautiful. Beautiful jumps. This is definitely a salmon, not a grill. It's a bigger fish. I'll be a lot happier when I get out of the boat and the boat stops moving. We can maneuver with this fish a little bit better. So off we go. So we're going to try to bring the fish into this quieter water over here. A lot easier on the fish, a lot easier to handle them. You don't have to swipe at them. Easier place to revive them. Nice, uh, nice uh, running water, but not really fast. So it's an easy place to get the oxygen back into their gills. And I got to go. Now we're going to tail this salmon. If we get it in. We're not going to put it in the net because the guys feel that the nets are tougher on the salmon, and it's much easier to release them unharmed when you tail them. The, the uh, bigger salmon have, a, have stronger bones, and they have a real wrist that you can grab onto. It makes a nice handle. Oh, I hate it when they roll on it. So you notice Randy's gonna, he's gonna try to grab it, but when the salmon runs, he's gonna let go of the line, uh, let the rod absorb the shock. Whoa! <laughs> Dangerous for a rod tip at this point. <laughs> you wanna release all pressure on your rod. Oh! Oh, God! <laughs> oh! I'm sweating right here. <laughs> Most people would break the fish off. It's only about 12 pound test tippet. Yes! Nice. We got a couple minutes. So what's the size estimate? 15. 15. 15 pounds. Pretty nice. These are the, some of the favorite flies in the Ristagouche, and they're also favorites throughout uh, Maritime Canada and actually throughout the world. Uh, you have a, a very dark fly with a bright green butt, the black bear green butt, one of the most popular salmon flies in North America. And then for a lighter fly, you have the silver rat. That's one that the guides like to go to when the day's bright. They have a rusty rat, very traditional New Brunswick fly, uh, a little bit brighter fly. And then you have the green highlander. Uh, that was originally a classic feather wing fly, and this is, a, this is tied with a, with a hair wing, but it's a bright green and yellow fly. And then you have a smaller undertaker, which is very close to the green butt. And you'll notice that some of these flies have double hooks, like this silver rat, and some have single hooks. The double hooks are used in faster, deeper, higher water. Gets the fly down a little bit better. It's illegal to use weighted flies. Even though a salmon usually comes up for a fly, it's illegal to use weighted flies. The double hook adds some weight and um, gets the fly down there. And finally, you've got a dry fly. For God knows what reason, Atlantic salmon will come up and smack great big dry flies. Again, even though they're not feeding, they will come up and smack a dry fly, dead drifted like a trout fly, or waked in the current uh, like, a, like a wet fly where it, it actually drags in the current behind the boat or behind the angler. Two styles of rods that are popular for use on the Restigouche River for Atlantic salmon. One is a single-handed rod between 9 and 10 feet long for anywhere from a 7 to 10 weight line. Two-handed rods, both switch and spay rods, are also very popular on the Restigouche. These two-handed rods, because of their extra reach, are also great for mending lines so that you get a perfect swing. 
you should bring at least two reels, a reel for each rod, and maybe even an extra spool. Large arbor reels are a big help because you can gather in line quickly. Floating lines are used through most of the season, which is great because floating lines are a lot easier to cast and a lot easier to handle. There are times early in the season when the water's high when you may need a slow sinking intermediate line or a sink tip line, but for most of the season, floating lines will do just fine. On many salmon rivers, it's customary to rest the pools in the afternoon. So after a short break and a very nice meal, I invited owner Kevin McDevitt to join me to demonstrate how it's done. Uh, we made a commitment uh, to the former owner when we acquired the camp that uh, we would practice full catch and release. And uh, so we take special care when we're landing the fish, uh, when we take pictures of the fish, uh, to make sure that we have a nice healthy release and uh, uh, we're preserving the resource. I'm coming, buddy. What was the way. name of that fly? That was the Green Widow. The Green Widow. Yeah. There she goes. On so here way. is Kevin. Just hooked, actually hooked two salmon. The tail of this run, which is called ledge, ledges? Ledges, yeah. Ledges. Yeah. Pretty interesting the way they did that. They very carefully slid the fish out of the run so as not to disturb the rest of the run. And they just kind of kept pressure on the fish and brought the fish out of the run so that it wouldn't disturb the rest of the run. So it was really nice the way they did that. And once the fish got out of the run and into the faster water, then he put the pressure on. So pretty cool way of doing it. She's going. She's not done yet, not ready. The way they land these salmon is that they don't use a net. The guide hand lines the fish in, they feel that the nets are a lot more damaging to the fish. So the guide will leader the fish and then bring it in carefully and then tail it. Okay, I think she's ready. He's um, basically letting the fish come around. Um, he's bleeding the bladder of air, burping it, more or less. And uh, she'll let you know when she's ready. She, uh, she'll uh, start to work her, her tail a little bit, and there she goes where she wants to go. It's a nice release. Yeah, that's a healthy fish. Very nice. Thank you, sir. Nice teamwork. That was great. Well done. Nice teamwork. Thank you. On this trip, I was very lucky. The fish were active and willing to rise up to a properly presented fly. So all I needed for my setup was a floating line and a nine foot, 12 pound monofilament leader. If we had encountered higher water, I might have wished that I had a sink tip line with four feet of monofilament leader on the end. Luckily, we didn't need it for this trip. We found ourselves quickly in the middle of a bid for a private fishing camp on the Restigouche River. We didn't balk, we acted very quickly, and now we're fortunate enough to own a private camp on the Restigouche River, and it's the only water on the Restigouche available to the public. When people think of the Restigouche, the, the history of the Restigouche, and people think of large salmon, and the Restigouche is known for having large salmon, and our average fish is approximately 17 to 22 pounds. The Restigouche is known for having the largest trains of Atlantic salmon in the world, one of the, maybe the top six rivers in the world with, with the largest Atlantic salmon. I can't emphasize the importance of good concentration. You should always keep your eye on your line and know where your fly is at all times. That's a salmon too.
For these big, strong fish, you really need lots of backing. I'd recommend at least 150 yards of backing on your reel. She'll come back up. He's coming back up. Good. Nope, now he isn't. You want to go for that point of grass over there, you think? Yep. Oh, nice job. Whoa, another one. Yeah. Come on inside here. There you go. I think the leader might be wrapped around. Oh, no. The leader might be wrapped around him. He's acting funny. Ease up the pressure on her a little bit. Let her, let her come, up, come yep. up on her own. Yeah, she's coming right up through here. Oh, she got wise to that move. I think I can tailor right from here. You want me to try? She's right behind that alder. Okay, just hang on. Whoa! Almost, <laughs> almost. <laughs> She goes. I've just caught and released my fourth salmon and I'm done for the day. That's the law. We've had an incredible time here at the Restigouche River Lodge on the Restigouche River between Quebec and New Brunswick. You can learn more about the amazing world of fly fishing on our website at www.thenewflyfisher.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Islander Precision Reels and Orvis Sporting Traditions.